These are the terrifying text messages a woman sent to her family before being found murdered. 20 year old Mahogany Jackson was from Birmingham, Alabama. On the 23rd of February this year, she sent her mum some disturbing messages before vanishing. She stated, send police, apartment three, held hostage, don't call, send address to Jaslyn, hurry. She was not seen alive by her family ever again. It's believed that her family had tried to go to the location that she specified, but couldn't find her anywhere. On the Sunday, her mum, Gail Maddox, posted on Facebook that her daughter was missing and documented what she'd put in the texts. Then, tragically, the following day, a member of the public found Mahogany dead. They called police after discovering her on the side of the road suffering from apparent gunshot wounds. She was found naked and was in an absolutely horrific state. The abuse she suffered is believed to have been videotaped and, and the graphic video has been shared on the internet. Police have arrested seven suspects in the case. There were four men and three women and apparently these were her so-called friends. She'd been essayed and beaten. Police have stated the facts of this case are deplorable and sickening. This woman went on a 10 day vacation and left her baby home to die. This case is absolutely gut turning, so this is a massive trigger warning. Crystal Cantillario is a 32 year old woman from Ohio and she worked as a substitute teacher at an elementary school, which makes this case even more disturbing after knowing that she works with children. And like many other people, she decided to go on a vacation during the summer months. And on June 6th, she went on a trip to the Caribbean and left her home in Cleveland, Ohio. But the only issue was she did not seem to care that she was leaving her 16 month old baby behind alone. Her baby girl was named Jalen and Crystal did not come home until 10 days later. And when she got back, she discovered her child was unresponsive. And when paramedics arrived at the scene, they sadly pronounced the child dead. The baby was extremely dehydrated and she was found in a playpen in blankets that were completely dirty. Crystal was then arrested and charged with her daughter's murder. She was fired from her job and pleaded guilty to one count of aggravated murder and one count of endangering children. She is due to be sentenced soon and if convicted of aggravated murder, she will get life in prison. This case is absolutely gut turning because what in the world does she think would happen if she left her 16 month old baby alone for 10 days? The baby obviously couldn't take care of itself and would slowly just die, which is exactly what happened. I don't know what could be going through someone's head to do this to their own daughter. And I wish Crystal nothing but the worst. Rest in peace to Jalen. You did not deserve this at all. Three dark psychology facts. There's an extremely high probability that a stranger has looked at you and thought about killing you without you even knowing it. The person you first look at when you enter a room is the person you feel most threatened by. When you spend 10 minutes in front of the mirror in a dimly lit room staring at yourself, your mind gets bored and starts scaring you by making you see a monster with your face combination. Three urban legends that turned out to be true. Number one. In the 1980s, parents in Long Island terrified their children with the legend of Cropsey. He was a murderous man who lived beneath an abandoned school and would capture children. But it was later found that the old janitor of the school was still living on school grounds and it's believed he was responsible for the disappearance of several kids, which made the legend of Cropsey true. Number two. Charlie No-Face was the terrifying legend of a featureless man who would roam the streets of Pittsburgh at night. But it was discovered that this man did exist. His name was Raymond Robinson. He was a very nice guy and he only left his house at night as he feared his deformity would scare people. Number three. Legend has it that an escaped asylum patient roams near the Fairfax County Bridge where countless amounts of dead rabbits have been found. There wasn't any legitimacy to this legend until a couple drove through this bridge in the 1970s only to find a man dressed as a bunny who threw an axe through their windshield before they got away. 
Scary facts you wish you never knew. It's very uncommon, but there have been many cases of people's intestines being ripped out from vacuum toilets on airplanes. So make sure to always stand up before you flush. A 58 year old man living in Japan alone started hearing strange noises at night and things around his house started moving around. So he decided to install a hidden camera and found out a woman had been living in his attic and cupboard for over a year. And the scary part is, is when he was checking the footage on his couch, she was actually in the cupboard right next to him. TikTok has a secret emoji. Type with the bars around it and see what you unlock. Until 2004, it was assumed the giant squid was only a myth, meaning there could be a handful of sea monsters we have yet to discover roaming the depths of the ocean. People with blue eyes are more likely to experience sleep paralysis more than anyone else. Now you can check if your phone activity is being monitored. Just click on share, slide to the very end and click more. And if any unknown apps appear before your contacts, delete them immediately. In 2013, Zac Efron was running through his house with socks on when he slipped and smashed his face so hard on his granite counter. It shattered his jaw and almost ended his life. He was knocked unconscious and when he woke up, half his chin was hanging off his face. People then accused him of plastic surgery, but Zac Efron claimed that his cheek muscles overgrew to compensate for the muscles that were permanently damaged from the injury. If you like and follow me, you'll get smart. School principal pleads guilty to hiring a hitman to kill a pregnant teacher he was having an affair with. This is Cornelius Green and Jocelyn Peters. This guy was a middle school principal and this happened in St. Louis. He pled guilty to murder to hire and conspiracy to kill. This whole courtroom hearing went down on February 28th. Now I want to be clear here on this. The hitman did kill her. She is dead. Everyone is agreeing he should get a life sentence, but he will be sentenced later and we'll see what he actually gets. I really hope it's life. This affair happened back in 2015 and then in 2016, he hired the hitman to kill her. On March 7, 2016, Green wired $2,500 to Cutler. Cutler came and committed the murder on March 21st. Then Green flew to Chicago to distance himself from the homicide. He drove to Jocelyn Peters' apartment in Green's car, broken and fatally shot her, and he used a potato as a silencer. Jocelyn Peters was about seven months pregnant at the time of her death and she got shot in the head. Cutler, aka the hitman, is being sentenced with the same charges as Green and his trial will begin on March 11th. What a wild story. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. And reminder, these videos are for informational purposes only. According to psychologists, people who watch... <laughs> Creepy facts that will give you chills. The last one is horrifying. A lone pilot was flying in Australia in 1978. He reported to air traffic control that he was accompanied by an aircraft above him. When asked to identify the aircraft, he replied, it isn't an aircraft. His plane disappeared and was never to be found again. What do you think happened to him? Comment your theory. Now you can check if your phone is spying on you. Simply click share, then click more. If you see an app you don't recognize before your contacts, it is recording you. More than 7,000 people pass away annually due to doctors' bad handwriting. Neither medicine nor science has an answer for what consciousness is or where it originates. Before the last fact, please follow us to support future videos and learn every day. Humans have an innate sense that tells them whenever someone or something is watching them. 
That's why people immediately look towards you if you stare at them. Those chills you get when you feel like you're being watched? They're probably not just chills. I'm starting a new series where I talk about horror movies that are based off of real events and talk about what actually happened and what didn't. Starting off strong with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. For those who don't know, the story of the movie follows this family of cannibals that are living on a farm in Texas. They kidnap people and they use everything they can from these people around their house. They're using hair to stuff pillows, they're using skin to make chairs and lampshades, and of course they are also eating the meat from these people that they kidnap. But they also say that some grave robbing is definitely happening as well, in order for them to prepare their house in this fashion. The events of this film are inspired by a real-life serial killer known as Ed Gein. Other movies claim to be inspired by these attacks as well, such as Psycho, Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal, and of course, Texas Chainsaw. But where does the movie compare to reality? Let's get into it. Ed Gein killed and decapitated two women that allegedly looked like his mother. It is also suspected he killed another person who worked at a hardware store, I believe. He was only tried for one murder and he pled the insanity plea, but he was a grave robber and he was taking skin and bones and he was putting them around his house. One of the most infamous things taken from Ed Gein's home was a lampshade made out of human skin. So yes, there are some similarities between the film and what actually occurred in real life. Of course, the movie over sensationalizes it and brings it to the max. I took a class in college that was all about the media and the CSI effect when it comes to horror films and the effect of the over sensationalism of true crime and what it's done to the genre. So if there's any other horror films you'd like to compare to their real story, let me know. This man made an absolutely sickening confession after murdering his children. Emily and Theodore Price were two children living in Nebraska. It was 2021 and the children were fondly known by those close to them as Emmy and Teddy. On the 16th of May, the siblings' lives would come to a horrific end. The children's mum actually lived in Illinois and she became concerned after she was unable to reach the children's father. She rang police and asked them to do a welfare check. Meanwhile, their dad, 38-year-old Adam Price, had actually gone on the run and headed to California. He then showed up at a church and confessed to a priest to killing his children. He actually told two different priests how he had intentionally killed the children and that it was not a spur of the moment thing. He chillingly stated that if he had the option, he would do it again. The two children were found smothered to death in their beds after Adam had tucked them in. The siblings were described by loved ones as some of the sweetest, most loving children. Police in California tracked the man down just hours after his children were found dead. He was arrested and charged with their killings. Now, investigators actually found evidence of premeditation. Adam had withdrawn $1,500 from two separate ATM machines. It's believed that this was done in preparation of going on the run. He also took his bins and recycling out a day early. In court, Adam tried to claim that his marriage was breaking down and he was in crisis. Thankfully, the jury dismissed this and he was found guilty of both murders and he will receive two mandatory life sentences. According to accounts from Lincoln's friend, War Hill Lamont, the 16th president was haunted by reoccurring dreams forewarning his assassination. Since that tragic event, numerous credible individuals have reported having encounters with Lincoln's ghost, particularly within the White House, including the Lincoln bedroom. One notable incident involved Queen Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina? who, after hearing a knock at her door, was startled to find Abraham Lincoln standing before her. The encounter left her so shaken that she reportedly fainted. Another peculiar episode involved Winston Churchill, who, while stepping out of the bathtub, naked and smoking a cigar, claimed to have seen Lincoln by the fireplace. Churchill allegedly said, Good evening, Mr. President. You seem to have caught me at a disadvantage. Even First Lady Grace Coolidge confessed to witnessing Lincoln's ghost during her husband's presidency. She described an eerie sighting of him gazing out of the window of the Lincoln bedroom, which had served as his office during his time in office. Adding to the paranormal incidents, Ronald Reagan's dog displayed peculiar behavior, frequently stopping and barking at the Lincoln bedroom while refusing to enter. These accounts contribute to the enduring mystery surrounding Lincoln's ghost, making it part of the White House history. This man thought he had a tumor in his lungs. Turns out it was just a traffic cone. 
His name is Paul Baxter. He's 47 years old and he visited a clinic complaining of coughing up mucus. Two months prior, he was diagnosed with pneumonia. He got antibiotics and he was good after that. But he still had a weird feeling in his lungs, so he decided to go get an x-ray. He was also a longtime smoker, so that's why the doctor suspected this was a tumor. They saw a small mass in his lungs. Turned out it was this traffic cone right above me. So doctors used a bronchoscope with four steps to remove the mass, or what they thought was a mass. They saw it was orange, and upon pulling it out, it was a one centimeter long traffic cone from a toy set. Here's the man, Paul Baxter here, holding it for size. This thing was stuck in his lungs for 40 years. He got a play set when he was about seven years old, and children like to put things in their mouth and inhale things by accident. In Baxter's case, it was there for 40 years and he showed symptoms later in life. I would imagine the relief that Paul Baxter felt was unimaginable. It probably felt so good. And honestly, even better because it's not a tumor in his case. Let me know what you guys think about Paul Baxter's story in the comment section below. And as always, these videos are for informational purposes only. This is a real sign in a city called Davao in the Philippines. And there's a lot of history behind it. Now, as you can see in the sign, it says waving children, please wave back with a pair of children with their arms up. This sign serves as a warning to everyone passing by that there are ghosts of children in the area. It's believed there's a ton of supernatural activity all around the area, and if you don't wave back, these children will come and haunt you. Upon researching this story, I haven't found anyone reporting that they haven't waved back to any of the children. I've only heard accounts of people waving back and then being okay afterwards. So with that information in my head, I can only assume the worst happens if you don't wave back. So obviously, if you're traveling in the Philippines and you see a child wave to you, wave back for your own safety. The last thing you want is a ghost child following you and haunting you for the rest of your life. Let me know what you guys think about this. I also covered a video on the Aswang, which is another Filipino urban legend. Very scary stuff. Definitely go check that out. And if you have any suggestions, let me know. Sydney has some wild urban legends, so here's three of them. First up, it's said that during the 19th century, pubs in the rocks had secret tunnels leading to the docks. They weren't for easy grog transport though. Instead, they were used to transport unconscious sailors who had had too much onto ships needing crew. When they woke up in the middle of the ocean, they'd be told that during their big night out, they'd signed up for an intercontinental journey. Next up, it's said there are bodies in the pillars of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. During construction of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, 16 workers would lose their lives. Apparently three of those would fall directly into the still wet concrete pillars. It's said that these three were unable to be recovered, leaving them sealed in there forever. And finally, there's a bloke who hides in the bushes just outside Walleye Creek Station and goes to town on himself. This one is sadly true. In fact, he's been caught on multiple occasions, sometimes by passengers on the passing trains. Breaking news, a man held a sleepover for his 12-year-old daughter's friends and spiked their drinks. Though the incident took place in August of last year, the suspect has just been officially charged. The girls say it all began when the father hosting the sleepover, quote, insisted they drink the mango smoothies he made them that night after facials and movies in the basement. The girls also told authorities that the smoothies had, quote, tiny white chunks throughout sprinkled on top. When one of the girls tried to decline the smoothie, he reportedly made her a second one and insisted that she try it. The girl told authorities that she took a few sips of the second one but didn't drink much of it. She said though the suspect monitored her consumption and got mad when he saw the other girls were drinking out of each other's cups. He had reportedly give them each individual colored straws so they would not drink out of each other's cups. One of the girls said she quote, felt woozy, hot and clumsy, then tipped over and blacked out into a thick, deep sleep. One of the girls managed to stay awake, telling officers, quote, she could feel him watching her by his presence as she kept her eyes shut, pretending to be asleep. She said she believed he was doing tests to make sure that they weren't awake. Some of those included waving his finger under a girl's nose twice and moving one of the girl's arms. The victim, who was still awake, was then able to text her mother. She told her mother to say that she had a family emergency and that she didn't feel safe and that she might not respond, but to please come get me. That was followed by a crying emoji and quote, please, please pick me up, please, please. That girl was able to eventually get in touch with a family friend who came to pick her up. The family friend woke up the girl's parents and then they notified the other girl's parents. At around 3 a.m. when the other parents drove to the home to pick up some of the girls, the suspect then reportedly asked them to return in the morning. The parents said that they would get the other children home safe. 
One of the girls could not walk on her own and kept asking, quote, what happened, and that is what prompted her parents to take her to the hospital. The next day, about 12 hours after consumption, authorities spoke to her and they said she, quote, walked slowly and used the assistance of her mother for balance. Her eyelids were heavy and she spoke slowly. During her visit there, she tested positive for a medication that, quote, produces sedation and hypnosis. After six months, the suspect has officially been charged with six felony charges and three misdemeanors. He was officially arraigned on Wednesday, February 28th. Since then, he has posted his $50,000 bail. To stay up to date on this case, make sure you click the playlist below. I'll keep you guys updated. What do you think? Drop in the comments. Mariam lives in the UK with her family and after having a small baby, strange things started happening at her home. And she decided to record some of these strange things and I'm going to show you guys some of her very creepy videos. This is one of her first videos. Check this out. Here, can you give me any sign, anything? Move it the chair from the table. Oh, oh my god, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. Look at that, look, look at that, look. Can you stop now? It's enough. I know you are here. It's enough. What do you want? Okay, 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 leave it, leave it. You need to leave now. This is not your house. You need to leave. This is not your house, no. They were very creeped out about it, and after uploading several videos on the issue, things got even creepier. The thing is, paranormal investigators say you should not communicate back with these spirits because things can get creepier, and they did. And this is one of her next videos. Check this out. can imagine that they were very creeped out, but it gets even creepier. Check this out. This girl killed her mother in a very brutal way and whatever you do, don't look up the picture. This horrific incident happened at a family's home in Istanbul, Turkey on May 24th, 2021. 35-year-old Tuxi Sayan, who was on the left, murdered her 67-year-old mother named Selvia Palabiak, who was on the right. Tuxi Sayan was said to have flown into a rage after her mother refused to sign the apartment over to her. The pair had reportedly been arguing for some time about gaining ownership of the mother's home, and eventually the argument heated up and turned into something truly disturbing. It is said at this moment, Tugsy had enough and allegedly murdered her mother before dragging her lifeless body into the bathroom and cutting off her head. Tugsy, who is a qualified emergency medical technician, is believed to have used her intimate knowledge of the human body to secretly dispose of her mother's body. She reportedly planned to chop up the rest of the body, including stripping all of the meat off the bone of her left leg before she was caught. Worried neighbors raised the alarm about the house of horrors after they were unable to contact the mother. They immediately called the police who rushed to the address. Once at the home, officers found themselves face to face with the daughter. However, Tuxi refused to allow the cops to enter her flat. They persisted until she gave in when one of the cops questioned Tuxi about her mother, saying that her mother was not home and that she went out early. She also added, she still hasn't come home, I don't know where she is. While she did not allow the police to enter the flat at first, she reportedly admitted that she had killed her mother after a short time saying, I killed my mother, she is in the bathroom. Officers were left stunned to find the butchered body with the meat completely removed from the woman's left leg, and her head was in a pot in the kitchen filled with water. 
Whatever you do, do not look up these crime scene photos. They are truly horrific. According to the police, the human meat that was removed from the leg was put in a bucket. Local media reported that the young woman wanted her mother to register the flat in her name and was murdered because she refused to do so. It is now revealed that Tugsy's mother, the victim, had filed a complaint against her daughter previously. She reportedly said, my daughter is going to kill me. First she took my bracelets, then she asked for my house. She threatened me with a knife. Tugsy reportedly said in her statement to the police, I am schizophrenic, my mother attacked me and cast a spell. Tugsy has been admitted to a mental facility after she was determined mentally ill. This case is truly disturbing and how could anybody do this horrific act to their own mother?